There are two approaches to education that you need to know as a parent. Are you raising your child to be a people pleaser or a change maker? Here are the things you need to know. It's our education system that's pushing children to perform rather than grow from within. Welcome to the I Am Education podcast, where we explore transformative ideas for parents, educators, and anyone passionate about shaping the future of learning and humanity. Join us as we dive into the latest insights, practical tools, and inspiring conversations that empower both children and adults to thrive. Let's unlock the potential of education together. I am education for the love of learning. My name is Jason Alexander, and I'm here to help guide you and support you through this wonderful world of children. Now, I fundamentally believe that there are two education processes at play, educating from the outside and educating from the inside. Now, educating from the outside, this refers to all those external skills on on display reading, writing, counting, drawing, all of these physical skills that someone can show that would indicate that they are well-educated. And now educating from the inside refers to internal skills, confidence, self-love, acceptance, that connection to yourself, all of those things that are not necessarily shown visually but are definitely felt internally. Now, as a society, our education system, it mostly focuses on the process of educating from the outside, using these physical markers, reading, writing, counting, as points of growth. And so we will often ask children to perform tasks. Let's take the example of a family gathering. How often do we see it? Child can count to three. One, two, three. You get a clap. My child knows what an elephant says. We've all seen them. And then generally the response by all the family, yes, yes, it's clap. It's clap. It's it's that external motivation. And we utilize these different physical feats or external skills that a child shows as part of their growth and their development. We've all seen it. We've all been part of it. It happens. And coincidentally, children also, especially those that are externally motivated, they love to showcase what they can do. But it's typically only if they're getting a response from it. Claps, celebrations. Hey, I've seen it. Pass a bit of money. It's all these different things that a child develops a sense of external validation for what they can do. And as humans, we are pattern-making machines. It's one of the most amazing things about the human experience. We develop reasoning. We develop an understanding. Oh, if I do this, this is the response. I like this response. I will continue to perform the thing. But what happens when that response doesn't occur? When we're intrinsically motivated, the response is from in here. When we're externally motivated, the response is from all around us. I have an example of how this can play out for an adult. Let's take the concept of chocolate. We all love it. We all love it to varying degrees. And now let's say every day when you came into work, your boss, your manager, your superior person, whatever they're called at your workplace, let's say they gave you a chocolate. Here you go, have a chocolate. And then they walked away. One day, okay. That was kind of cool. I do like Kit Kats. Day two. Hey, here you are. Have a chocolate. Hmm, okay. Day three. Chocolate. Day four, day five. For this example, let's go up to day nine. Nine days in a row of chocolate. Just for walking into the work. You start to get a pep in your step. You're like, I really like chocolate. This is cool. This is what I'm getting. This is fantastic. Oh, I wonder what chocolate I'm going to get today. Is it going to be a boost? Is it a Mars bar, Kit Kat, Cadbury, the classic dream chocolate? What? What's it going to be? Day 10, you walk in eagerly. Oh, I'm going to get the chocolate. You walk into your office and boss goes, morning. Hmm. No chocolate. What is going on? Okay, it's just a thing. Okay, day 11, you walk in. Boss, hello. 
Hmm. Now, as we know, we are pattern making machines. We start to piece things together. Oh, I just bought a brand new top. Maybe this top is not the right color. Um, maybe I'm using a different scent, a different fragrance. Maybe they don't like that fragrance. Okay, what was the fragrance I was using last week? Okay, let's try and replicate that. So day 12, we come in, we're going, oh, I've worn this shirt before. I received a chocolate. I'm wearing a fragrance that I received before. I'm arriving at the same time. I've got everything is lining up. The stars and the moons are aligning. And still, boss, morning. Hmm. As an adult, the little stories start to talk. What have I done wrong? Maybe I need to do more. Maybe I haven't done enough. Maybe I need to stay in late. Maybe I need to do this. Uh, all these things start occurring in our minds because we're receiving this external validation, this external motivation for something. And so children, they're the same. So the child that is performing all of these tasks, they're learning to count, they're learning their numbers, they're learning all their letters, they're phonetically spelling out everything, they're showcasing all these things. If they don't actually want to do it and they're doing it for external motivations, how long will they continue to do it when those external motivations are gone? So back to the family gathering, let's look at a child that is internally motivated, that has been educated from the inside. This child might be more regulated or they might not be. This child might be more inquisitive. This child might be more self-driven. Coincidentally, self-driven often also leads into stretching boundaries and pushing on those boundaries a little bit just to see how strong and secure they are. But in all of these things, a child that is being educated from the inside is authentically them. They don't feel the need to be anyone else because they've been educated from the inside. They know that they are enough. And so when it comes to educating children or educating anyone, we can teach skills. I can teach a child to read and write. I could probably teach a dog to read and write. But how often is that confidence of performing that skill linked to our confidence as an individual? So a child that has learned to write their name, I'm so clever, I can write Jason. Look at me, I'm amazing, I'm so clever. I've done this. Now I need you to write the name Rebecca. Oh, hold up a second. I don't have an R in my name. I don't have an E or a B. Oh, I have an A, I can do that. I don't have a C. Uh, so I can do one of those letters. Okay, I'm just going to write that. Ta-da! Doesn't quite work. So often when we're teaching children particular skills, if we're focusing on that educating from the outside model and we're really honing in on these skills, they develop a confidence that relates to this skill and that's about it. Outside of that skill, their confidence do, 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 dwindles. So educating from the inside, we become confident in life. And we develop a mindset of, I'll figure it out. I can do this. I've got this. And that is a mindset of growth. That is a mindset of someone that is willing to take on the world. Sorry, my middle child has just started prep this year and for the last four years, she's been in care with me. I've either been the director of the center that she's working at or I've been her explicit uh, early childhood teacher. And over the four years, she's never shown an interest in writing her name. She's never tried writing her name. Um, she knows what her name is and that's, she was happy with that. She could recognize it. Now, Come her first day of prep, as most prep children do, they perform the ancient trial of writing your name. And so she came into this experience full of vigor, full of confidence, full of a connection to her, her authentic self. 
something that we've been working on for the last four years of care with her. And she sat down at the table, took a deep breath. Another thing we've been practicing, the deep breaths. She knows that helps to settle her. She doesn't really know why, but she doesn't need to. It works. She took a pencil, traced her name. (sighs) Took another deep breath. And I was able to stand there and watch her. It was amazing to watch. I watched her write her name. And you could tell what it said. This was the first time she had ever attempted to write her name. She'd never had an inkling to do it. But what she had is an innate confidence in herself that allowed her to have the mentality of, I can figure it out. I can do this. And so she approached that first day, write your name. Done. And the face that she showed afterwards when she looked up at me and said, I wrote my name. She wasn't seeking validation. She didn't need a ticket tech parade. She didn't need claps. She didn't need chocolate. She didn't need any external motivators. She was excited that she did it for her. That she was able to showcase the mentality of, I can do this. And that there is the result of educating from the inside. And this is the reason why I love Montessori education. Within Montessori, there is the potential for children to take learning as far as they want to go. If you love numbers and want to learn about what happens if we add this number and this number and this number and this number and this number number together, or what's the biggest number we can make with all the golden beads, let's do it. We can do all this. But the key focus is children are internally driven. They want to achieve for themselves. They have a love for learning, and that goes beyond any single skill they can develop. And a key thing for Montessori education is it doesn't matter the skill sets a child is showing, whether they're able to do multiplication in the thousands before their first day of prep, or whether they can tell you that this is two. Both of these children have an authentic connection and confidence and love for themselves. They know that who they are is a perfect being, and that is something to be celebrated. A key part of educating from the inside is not teach me to learn. I know how to do that. I'm a curious individual child. Teach me to love. Help me learn to accept myself fully, to know that I have strengths. I have these things that I am amazing at, but I also have opportunities to grow. I have things that I need help with. I need things that I'm working on. I'm not broken. I am authentically me. Imagine a world where that was the norm, where children had the opportunity to grow into adults that have acceptance and love for themselves, to know their strengths, but also know there's things they got to work on. Now, we have much to learn from children. They can be the most authentic versions of the human experience. They showcase curiosity. They freely ask questions. No question is silly to them. What's this? What's that? What's this? What's that? Why does the sun go down at night? Why is the sky blue? What is the bee doing in that flower? Why does it hurt when I poke my eye? All of those have been questions that I have answered from children. Children express their emotions. They don't feel guilt. They don't feel shame. They can understand the emotion of angry. It's neither good or bad. It simply is. And that emotion of angry can be a really good motivator if you need to get something done. Children engage in joy. They understand that joy and happiness aren't one and the same. Children have an innate feeling of joy. Just watch a toddler when music comes on, especially when it's their favorite song. They will dance. It's why we use the term, dance like no one's watching. Because a child, when they're dancing... It is like no one is watching. They engage in joy. And they engage in joyful play. Resilience. So for that child that's learning to walk, they've developed an acceptance for themselves that there's things that they're good at and things they need to work on. 
and they will fail over and over and over again until they get there. How many adults do you know that have that same resilience? And another thing a child shows is acceptance. Acceptance of themselves and acceptance of others. They see people as people. And that is a key part of the human experience, which is beautiful to watch. Children are born with the educate from the inside mindset. Yet as a society, we often steer them into educating from the outside. This shift, it can stifle natural expression or emotion, joy, resilience, acceptance. It nurtures adults who struggle to freely embrace these qualities. Reclaim the power of internal motivation and authenticity. Living and learning from the inside out. So this here is educating from the inside. I would love to know your thoughts about it. I'd love to know what you're utilizing with your own children to help them become accepting of who they are and understand that they are a perfect being just the way they are. Until next time.